So as we get started today this video is divided into chapters. If you wanna skip at any point just look at the sliding bar underneath the plating window and you can see the chapters to skip ahead. Welcome back to the Crochet Cradle. So my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today is the Crochet Color Block Ruana. So what I'm going to do today is that I'm gonna show you how to get started. I'm gonna explain how this pattern works. I'm going to demonstrate the stitch work that's in this pattern and then the rest I'm just going to explain based on the pattern. This is considered an easy level. So it's a six and a half millimeter size K crochet hook today. Karen Color Rama Ogo and before we begin I'm gonna show you how to open up your Ogo here and we're gonna do that and then I'll be right back in just a moment. So let's open our Ogo and what you wanna do is put your hands in behind and see this hole? You wanna just use your fingers and just push those flaps up and the top will peel and you're just gonna pull back and it is sticky right in the midpoint and you're just gonna pull and there is your Ogo. One thing that you should know is that the colors are equal length all the way around but they don't always start at the exact same spot. So a part of the color may be over on the other part of, of the side. So we wanna take it out just like that. Put that aside and you wanna pull like this and this will reveal a plastic tie that is in between. So taking your scissors and that will open it and then grab that tie and pull and that will take that out. So that's what's holding it as a ring. So you can see that this color here is also on this side. So when you start your idea you may want to start at a particular point if you want the entire color sequence. So if you wanted to start with this color and not this color all you have to do is that you just have to reach in with your fingertips and just pull like this and just kind of hold the colors and you'll see that the ogles will split apart like this. So if you wanna do color play that's exactly how you do it and there is the color transition change right there. You can snip it and then begin at this point and therefore you have a fresh color of this and when this comes back into play later you can bring it back around and have the ogle finish. So the way that this is wrapped um, is really quite fabulous but it also allows you to change color. So if you wanna change any order of anything just separate it and then just use it and they recommend that you put it into a plastic uh, Ziploc bag if you want to but if you crochet as fast as I do I just get a salad bowl. Just put all five pieces into the salad bowl and that's something that I would do for myself. So this is a bulky weight yarn. It's number five so it's thick. So you're gonna need a total of nine Ogos in order to make this. This is really quite generous. The thing that we think about when we're making stuff like this, this is really truly a wearable blanket. That's why there's so many Ogos. So you're actually gonna be using two Ogos at the same time but they're hoping that you don't use the same color in the same sequence. But just because it's suggesting that doesn't mean that you can't use two Ogos that are completely different colors to have this look. The way that you see the front here is really quite misleading because you're thinking you're gonna have to sew that together but in actual fact you don't and I'll explain. So it's kind of misleading the way that this thing is done because I was looking at it and thinking I'm gonna have to sew all these little blocks together. Absolutely not. It's two different Ogos. So on the back side when we go to start this one here is that both sides of the same panel are the same width. So we're gonna use one Ogo for half of it and the other Ogo for the other half and we're gonna do it exactly at the same time. What's happened is that once it gets to the neck here we're going to decrease some stitches out. Therefore it's gonna make this more narrow. So therefore this particular color can go longer in the, in the distance because the width is much shorter. So it gives that really unique look. So that's how this one is particularly working today. So this here is one panel right up over and down the other side and this is another panel up and over. And but what I want to show you is some instructions that I've made that's available on the Crochet Crowd exclusively and it's a free downloadable. So it's only two pages. This is page number two. This is showing just one panel and this indentation here is the neck. So just think that this is the back. The person is standing looking that way and the other half is here. So let me show you my little diagram that I made for you here. So what I've done here is that I've come up with this stitching diagram for you to show you the repeat pattern and I'm gonna demonstrate for you some techniques that can uh, work this out pretty easily. So one half here is one Ogo and the other half is the other one and we're crocheting in real time using the two different Ogos at the same time. So this Ogo here is at a different color segment than this one hopefully. So when you match up your Ogos make sure that you're not matching both colors to be the same because then 
that it's pointless, right? So what we have here is that you'll do one panel and then eventually you're going to get to 34 inches and then we start two rows of, of a decrease which is forming the round neck area and then the rest of this is just back and forth. What I'm going to recommend to you is that you think about doing a stitch marker. And so I labeled this side as red. So I would get a red stitch marker. Just red yarn is fine. And this side I did as blue. So I'm gonna get a blue stitch marker. And when I go to do my first row I wanna label with the stitch marker which side is which. So then I can just quickly look at this diagram say okay I'm on the blue side. This is the instructions when I'm going to start a blue side across and then if I'm looking at the red side and I have to go back I can just look here. So we're going to go there until 34 inches. We do two rows of a decrease and then the remaining is just all the way to the end. So looking at it from here the biggest part see the line. It's both equal on both sides of the distance and as soon as you get to the next line the one side narrows off and that's why you have those long um, rectangular shapes on the front of the rule on it because it narrows down. And so the other side just stays consistent all the way. So once you do one panel you do the other and then you sew them with the whip stitch and hopefully you'll know how to do that. There are tutorials on how to join things on YouTube. So you'll put the two together and then you'll fold this over. So just re think about the person. I'll just put a nose here or a beak. The person is standing this way. So when you go to fold it over you'll leave about 11 inches from the top of the shoulder area here and then you'll sew it all the way down on both sides to join it and then you'll circle around. So what I want to do is that I wanna demonstrate here the diagram and we're gonna be doing that next. So in the diagram as we get started the chain is actually made up of two colors. So we're gonna use one color for the set number of chains and then the other color for the, the remaining number of chains going across. And then what we're going to do is that there's one ogo for this side, one ogo for the other and when you come across we want to get it established and when the ogos are joining each other there's going to be a single crochet on both sides of the line. So we'll, we'll have two single crochets in a row. You'll notice that there's chain one single crochets here and here but right where they join there's always two that are butting up to each other. So this is the halfway mark. You may wanna put a stitch marker at the halfway mark just in case you don't see it. So when you come across and you go you want to be able to pick up the color that's holding here, leave this color behind and then just go across and then back across. Once you understand this pattern it's just repeating of rows number two to three to 34 inches and then once we have that done the grayed out area is just row number two just for uh, demonstration purposes and then you start here and then you're going to shape the neck and then you end a little bit early and then the next one we put the next two together and then go all the way across and then it's just a matter of going all the way to the end. What I want to tell you right off the hop though is that on row number this row right here you're going to notice is that this row here is not consistent on both sides. So every other time it's consistent but once we get to this narrow part one side will look slightly different than the other and so you just gotta keep that in mind. Nothing wrong with it. It's just a matter of keeping with the pattern. So without further ado we're going to go ahead into the stitching uh, uh, stitching now. Uh, five sorry a six and a half millimeter size K crochet hook and we're gonna have our two uh, ogos to go and that's what we're gonna do next. So as we get started I'm using two different ogos off camera. One is Lippy and the other one is Concord. So what I'm going to do is that when we start our first chain there's a total of 63 but don't do that. You need to only do a certain amount with this color. So with your first color I need you to only chain 31. So let's do one, two, three, four and five and go all the way to 31 and hold for me. So don't go any further than 31. Once you have your 31 on here put the other yarn on and that'll be your next ones that we're going to do. So I need you now to chain 32 starting with this one. So we have one, two, three, four, five and go all the way to 32 and meet me back here in just a moment. So I now have got my 32 on here. So where I have left this yarn here is still holding. So when I get to this middle area here I'm gonna let this yarn fall out of the way and then I'm gonna grab this one and continue along. So that's how we're gonna do and then at the end any tails that we have we're going to be able to hide those in later. So what I want to do is complete row number one which will get us established on this pattern and the colors will really help you to know where you are as well and this is going to be moving on to row number one. 
So let's do row number one. We're going to go second chain from the hook. So one and two and just single crochet. And now you're going to chain one, skip the next one and single crochet in the next. And you're gonna do that until you see the color change. As you're moving along to the middle then, the last one here, so I've already chained one and the last one is going to be here. So you don't wanna finish that stitch cause you wanna jump into the next co color. What I want to tell you is that there should be a total of 16 of these single crochets include this one that you're about to do. So there should be 16 of this color. So don't count the chain one spaces, just the single crochets and make sure that you have your 16 single crochets right from the edge. Once you have the middle here and you're ready to jump, put this to the back. Don't ever bring it to the front and then I want you to just pull this color up and just finish that color. So finish this color with this one here and then you're going to single crochet into the very next stitch. So this is the halfway point in the middle right there. So if you're confident in your stitches then what you can just do then is just chain up one, skip one and single crochet in the next and you're gonna do all the way to the other side. So there will be a total of 16 single crochets as well on this side because the panel is equally in half when we start the back of this. So it changes only after we get to the shoulder mark. So continue to go all the way across and I'll be right back in just a moment. So I'm coming all the way across and chaining one and I'm gonna go into my last one. So as I mentioned there's gonna only be 16 of these single crochets so don't count the chain one spaces, just the single crochets between the time that you started it and the time you finished. Once you have verified that both of these are correct then you're ready to move on. What I would like for you to do though and it's just for my own purposes for myself so I can stay on track and I would do it if you weren't watching me as well is that I would grab the, a red and a blue stitch marker and I already grabbed them. So the starting of this when we started this side I'm going to put in a red stitch marker and that will indicate to me that I'm on the right side whenever I'm going to start on this edge working my way this way. So that's what I'm gonna do and then the other edge I'm going to put a blue on the other side so that I can quickly look at it and then determine. So if I'm looking back at the diagram I can just put on there that it's red and blue and you'll know exactly where you are. So once we are get ourselves established you have to go back and forth on the right side and the wrong side finishing on the wrong side but if you don't mark the stitches it may be hard for you to be able to tell which is which. So we know that when the blue when you're finishing up, so if I was finishing here I'm finishing on the right side but if I was turned the other way and I was finishing on the other side which is the red I know that I'm finishing on the wrong side. So that's something that you can consider. So we're going to move on now to row number two and three which is the repeat. So whenever you start a new row you have to make sure that the yarn strands are on the front side when you go to start a row. So after you've done the color throw it to the back side and then continue along. So when you turn it around it's gonna be on the front side. So make sure that that's happening and you can get rid of your tail ends at any time with uh, hiding those in with the tapestry needle. Let's begin row number two. Let's pick up our work and let's begin and we're gonna maintain the coloring and right where it stops in the middle is right where we're gonna end that color and then carry on with the next. So let's begin row number two. So row number two is gonna be the same until we get to the shoulder area. So row number two you chain up one and you single crochet in the first one. And you will notice that in the next stitch there's a space. So in order to maintain this type of stitching the next one has to be a single crochet in the space and then that's when you start the jumping. So the jumping is chain one, jump over the next single crochet and go right into the next space. So row number two is unique in that way that you have to fill in that first one. So just chain one and just jump into all the spaces until you see the color changing happening. And the color changing what's gonna happen is that the very last um, there's gonna be two stitches in a row and I'll show you that in a second. So I'm coming up to where the colors will meet. So chaining one. So I'll go into the space before the last of that color. Okay and then I go right into the color. Okay so into the single crochet but I don't finish that stitch. Let that fall to the back and grab the other color up and pull through to finish and then that's ready then to go. So do you see how this is dragging up and it shows? So when you go to do the very first stitch just crochet right up over top of what that is and therefore it'll, it'll hide it really good. So you do the first single crochet 
and then you fill in the first space and then you start the jumping again. So chain one and then continue with the spaces all the way to the other side. So I'm coming close to the other side. So I've got my eyes on my Ogos just to see when the colors will change and it kinda, it excites me when the colors change because that means that you'll have that neat look that is on there and you just let the Ogo just run its colors. If you would like to control the colors then you're gonna have to be strategic about when those appear but that's up to you. I'll leave that in your hands. So continuing all the way to the edge you come into the space before the edge and then you do the edge and this was completing of row number two. So when you go to turn your work make sure that these don't tangle too much and just position this in a way that it won't tangle and just kind of spin the project if you have to and we're gonna start row number three which is part of the repeat as well. So two and three are the repeat. So in row number three we're going to start off and you'll chain three and you'll single crochet in the first one but you'll notice that the next one has a single crochet so you're gonna jump over it. So chain one to jump and then come into the space after that. So that's kinda how we did our chain right. So just chain one and jump and keep doing that all the way to the color change and I'll see you there in a second. So I'm coming up to where the color changes and I've gone into the uh, one. There's a space so chain up one, jump over the next one and single into the next and don't finish that stitch. Let it fall to the back. Grab the other one that's holding and pull into that stitch and you will see that the traveling strand is there. So just scoop up underneath it and just grab it and single crochet the first and then look at the next stitch. It's solid so chain one to jump over that and come into the space right after and then you're going to continue that all the way to the end. So chain one and keep going into your spaces until the end of the row and this is row number three. So I'm coming close to the end of number three chain one and you'll see that there's two singles in a row so you'll jump over the first one and then just single crochet in the, in the last one. So there is a chain one before you do that right. So don't forget that. And then you're just going to go back to row number two and you turn your work. So when we go to do these kind of things row number two is the wrong side. So when we go and do up to 34 inches we have to finish on the wrong side which you have to do the blue. So you'll have to go across. So let's just review two and three one more time. So row number two once again and it's considered the wrong side so just chain up one. You'll single in the first and then there's a space which is next. So fill in the space and then start your jumping. So chain one and then come into the next space after that and then keep doing that until the color change. So at the end of this row this is considered the wrong side. So at the end of this row when it says finish on the wrong side row number two is the finishing on the wrong side. So just make sure you keep that in mind. I think I've said that more than enough times but I will probably say it again knowing myself. So let's uh, get to the color change and I'll be right back in a second. So row number two I'm coming into the space just before the color changes. Okay so there's a chain one before I did that and then come into the last one. So there's basically two singles in a row. Let that fall. Grab up your other color and pull through to finish and then go over top sorry go underneath that traveling line to, to trap it and then come into the next space itself and then begin. So you can see on row number two there are four single crochets in a row. So then chain one and then go into the next space after that and do that all the way to the edge and this will be row number two. So I'll see at the end of this row in a second. So coming up to the end of row number two I'm filling in the space before the edge and then the very last one. So this would be considered finishing on the wrong side. So this is what I would need to uh, finish before starting to doing shaping of the neck. Let's turn our work and do row number three just as a recap and turning it just chain up one single crochet in the first you can see that there's another single crochet in a row so we're gonna jump over that. So chain one and then come into the space after that and then go and change over at the middle point. So I'll see you there in a second. So I'm coming up to the middle point here. Chain up one. I can see two single crochets in a row. I've chained one already so skip over the first one. Go right into the one before the color change. Throw it to the back. Grab the new one up. Scoop underneath it to trap it. That traveling. And then I can see that there's a single crochet next. So I chain one to jump over it and come into the space. And then go all the way to the other side. This is row number three. I'll be back in a moment and then we're gonna recap and then I'm just gonna do a little bit more row, a few more rows and then I'll be uh, just ready to show you how to shape the neck. But at this point we've, we've already done the repeat. 
So at the end of row number three you're looking chain one, you're skipping over the next single, you have another one after that so come into the end. So I need you now to continue to go back and forth until you're 34 inches finishing on the wrong side. So finishing at the end of row number two and then that's where we're gonna pick up next. I'm gonna do a few more rows so I have a little bit more work. My Ogo is about to change on this one here which I'm excited about. So I just wanna do a few more rows and then we'll be back to shape the next. So just continue to go back and forth until 34 inches and this is where I will meet you in just a moment. So I'm coming up to the finishing on the wrong side. So you will have to go so that there's 34 inches. Now if you weren't watching me on camera what I do for something like this because I know that I have two panels I will literally stop this panel but I won't finish the yarn off and I'll grab two more ogos and I'll start the second panel and when and I'll take that to the 34 inches and I'll cross compare and lay them on top of each other to make sure that they are both the right uh, idea before I start going even further. So I do that whenever there's any kind of identical pieces on anything. So you can see that the colors changed on its own and it's really neat. Like honestly I just wanted to keep on going on this thing. So finishing on the wrong side. So when you finish on the wrong side the blue here should be over here and you're gonna finish and then you're gonna turn and you'll be back on the right side and this is where we're gonna pick up and I'm gonna show you how to decrease the colors so that you can actually make room for the neck and that's coming up next. So back here in the diagram we're gonna pick up right here and just say you got your 34 inches done so you probably should have your 34 if you're continuing on this tutorial and the halfway point still stays at the same spot but what we're going to do is that we're gonna finish this side a little bit earlier. So we're going to leave the, the last two spaces alone we're not gonna touch those and then the last two stitches as well. So when we go to do that two together um, with the, this um, stitch and the space we're gonna be playing here and then the re uh, remaining le uh, stays untouched. So just think about that because it, once you understand that that's the only part, the part that you really gotta think about because it's just a, a few stitches early and then the next one just builds up and then it's just straight back and forth once again. So let's uh, doing shaping of the neck and let's begin row number one. So we're now gonna shape the neck so you're just going to and remember it will be longer. So just chain up one and then begin what you already know. So you're just picking up what you already know so just chain up one, skip the first single here. So there was a single and a single and continue along and just change the color when you get to the midway point and I'll pick you up in there in a moment. So I'm crossing over the middle as we already know it let the color fall. So the second side we're gonna end short. So we're gonna start up and you'll pick up what you already know. Chain one to jump over the next single and what I want to do is that I wanna get close to the other side here. So the last two chain one spaces are not gonna be used here. So we're gonna be ending on this one right here. So this one plus the chain space will be a two together. So just keep that in mind and you can see that on the diagram too. So I'll see you there in just a moment and I'll show you how to do that two together stitch. So I'm working my way across and I'm looking for this. So there's the two empty chain one spaces. So this space that I'm currently in I'm gonna join it with this next double uh, single crochet. So just going into that space. So just going in, pull through, go into the next single crochet and pull through and you have three loops on the hook pull through all three and that's where you're gonna stop. So this next space these two will uh, stay empty and the last and this is where you're gonna turn your work and begin the second row of shaping of the neck and then you're done shaping. To do the second row let's begin that next. To begin the second part here to decrease again just chain up one and the first single crochet and the next chain one space is going to be together and then look you have a single crochet that's in the way so you've got to chain one and jump over that one and then continue this to the halfway point. This is when the sides are not balanced with each other as we talked about the symmetry is not exactly the same and so you're gonna be able to have to identify your stitches then going forward on what to do after you turn and start a new row. It's not a big deal just it's just a visual for you. So you're gonna get to the midway point and change over and so now this particular Ogo once it's now more narrow is going to be a lot longer in color it's because it's not as wide and we're gonna change over in a second. So you change over right there, let it drop, pick up the next one 
and then this side you're gonna go all the way to the, to the end. Okay, and just continue with what you already know. So let's uh, pick you up in a second and we're gonna continue to the front now and the front and the back all have to match each other and I'll be right back. So I'm coming all the way to the other side. Before you begin then what we have to do is that we have to mark where we are. So using another stitch marker, maybe I have one right here. Let me just pull up something. Just grab anything, it doesn't matter. And what I want to do is that I wanna stitch mark the second row down. So not the row that I'm on but the second and that will represent the halfway mark. So when you go to fold this in half, the back side and the front side should match each other. So this will be literally the halfway point. So when we go to turn this row here, we're just going to only go to where it does the decrease and then that's where we're gonna stop. So let's begin to do this row and so this is the front side of row number one. So chaining one and just match what you see. So you see a single crochet in the first which is obvious. So there's a single crochet in the way so you're gonna have to chain one and jump over it and then start the spacing on the other side. And then in the midway point you'll change over and I'll pick you up there in a second. So at the midway point I'm going to change over. So hopefully you can identify your stitches by now. Picking up, go scoop underneath that travel to hide it. And what I'm going to do is just match what I see. So I'm just gonna jump over the next one and go into the next space. And I'm going to see you on the edge in just a moment to make sure that you're turning properly. So I'm continuing across and I'm looking for that last stitch. Once we get it established, the color is changing too which is awesome. So we have a space before the end. So we're gonna go into that space and then the last one. And then we're gonna turn our work and go back in the opposite direction. So we're now gonna continue until you get to the, uh, to the both sides equaling the same. So chain up one, single in the first and make a decision on what your first stitch is. So you're, you see another single in a way so you're just gonna chain one and jump on over it. You'll change it at the midway point and then go across with the other color. And this is as simple as simple gets. So as promised I'm gonna do a few more rows. So this here is the stitch marker where I marked. So from this point here to the other side should be the halfway point. So when you go to fold it in half that should be the half. Okay so you fold it and so you can see that you still have in order to make it equal you still have to go over like that and that's as simple as simple gets. So let's uh, meet you back here in just a few moments and I will just do a few more rows so that we get that balance and then we'll continue with our lessons. So continuing along the front is working its way out. You can see it's more narrow on the one side here so your neck will be here. So what I have to do here I can see that this is the halfway point so when I go to fold then I'm going to just fold over and you can see that it's the same length. So the front and the back are both equaling each other. So we're gonna put the two edges together so the back seam and so this is just a representation of the back. So the, the other one will be representing. So you're gonna lay it over top of each other so that the indentations match each other. With the wrong sides facing together you're just gonna use any color that you want to and you're gonna go through both pieces. So just kind of sandwich it together and go on the edging and just going in and attach with the slip stitch and then chain one and then just single crochet yourself then through both halves all the way down matching them all together. And then if you're starting at the base then you'll stop at the neckline here. Right, and and well, once you get all the way across just then cut your yarn and use your tapestry needle in order to hide in the ends. So you're just gonna single crochet those edges together. You're also going to single crochet your edges when it comes to doing your armholes as well and we'll get there in a little bit. So when you get to your armholes again you'll be fa uh, folding this in half and you'll be measuring straight on down so it'll be folded. Okay, so let's just fold this example and so this here is the top so you'll fold down and measure 11 inches down and therefore that will be the start then at the 11 inch mark all the way to the base of your uh, project and so this 11 inches will all remain open where your arms can go into. And again with the wrong sides facing each other just once that's done then we're gonna have then the bottom edge and then you'll have the top coming up around and up around the neck and then back over and what we want to do is that we wanna just 
um, work our way around the edge. So let's do the edging of the first row. To do the edging you're just gonna follow it all the way around. Any sharp corners like this you're going to have to apply three single crochets to do that turn. So with the right side facing out, okay, so facing up you're just going to apply with the slip stitch and if you wanna start off in any corner you can and just start there, chain one and single crochet. Now it does state in the note that if you single crochet in every stitch and chain one space it will not work out for you. So what you wanna do is just kinda eye it out and just kind of evenly space it as good as you can. And the reason for it is that the tension of the stitch work um, lends itself to being more compressed than a typical single crochet. So as soon as you start to see it kind of wave a bit it means that you've, you've gotta jump a little bit more forward and uh, if it's starting to pull in and buckle it means that you're going way too quickly uh, across. So what I want you to do is go all the way around, follow it all the way and when you follow it it will go up over the neckline and then back down and you'll end up right here once again. So then once you get all the way around then you're going to do a reverse single crochet. To do a reverse single crochet once you get back around it's just one in every stitch so don't worry about any of the corners of being extra stitches. You're just gonna chain up one and then going in pull through and then pull through two and then go to the one before. Not everybody likes this type of stitch so if you don't wanna do this stitch it's up to you. People will leave a comment saying they don't like this stitch so I'm just covering my bases and you go backwards all the way around. This is called the crab stitch or reverse single crochet and it's actually a pretty easy to go pattern. The instructions are well written and with my diagram to help you I think that this is gonna be quite awesome. So um, I know this uh, filming hasn't been like step by step like an actual making a real sample but I'm hoping that it's enough for you able to express your creativity and to try and see what you can do. So until next time it's Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Have a good one. We hope to see you again real soon. Bye bye.